Hi, everyone. So if you joined us about, uh, what, an hour or two ago, yeah. the live feed we did then on the auction results didn't post properly, and we can't retrieve the video. So we're doing another one. Uh, we're doing a, a live feed again tonight here to give everybody an opportunity to know how the auction went yeah. um, and to give you some of the results. But this time I'm also more prepared. I've got some auction results in front of me. Um, I've got Melissa ready to go. Um, and we're going to talk results. Hey, have... Alyssa. <laughs> hey, Alyssa. <laughs> it's funny. We didn't have enough of everybody the first time around. <laughs> yes. So now we gonna, can get more questions. We're going to try and answer questions for you guys. First off, um, the auction was a great success. Considering that all of those items that were found in the house were going to be demolished or burnt, which was the other option that was burning the house down. It's, a miracle that I found so many interesting and unique artifacts in the home. Now, I found in total probably, I want to say about 175 pieces of pottery in the house. Thank you very much, uh, Keja. We found about 175 pieces of pottery total. 92 of them went at auction and ended. Was that last night? That, no, was it two nights ago? Night. I feel, oh, it was a couple nights ago. Two, yeah, three nights on ago. On the 30th. On the 30th, yeah. Boy, I'm, I'm out of it, right? I was at the house last night. Um, so we are, um, yeah, very excited with how things went considering it was all salvaged from the house and doing, um, I mean, we feel the auction went very well. So to give you an idea about how things went, I have logged on to, um, the completed auction listing page here and you can kind of, I don't know, you can't really see too closely, but that it tells you kind of what things went for and what they sold for. So, um, the the glazed roses were over five hundred fifty dollars each. Um, there was a few real surprises. Uh, everybody's been asking what's the most expensive thing that sold at auction. We had a sphere. It was a, a black silvered hand polished sphere. The reason why it went so high, it went for three thousand one hundred dollars, is that it's almost impossible to make a sphere. So we um, were very pleased to see that the sphere went for so much. And uh, that is one of the items that we actually kept back at our house. Uh, we kept the most perfect example of one of those spheres. Now, um, this is hollow. And Mary told me that the reason she put something out, if you can hear that. You guys hear that? She would put a hardened piece of clay inside to prove to people that it was hollow. And if, if you can see, it's pretty well perfectly round. You know how difficult that is to do by hand? <laughs> That's pretty well a perfect sphere, handmade. Like I, you can't even see that it's not absolutely, you know, it's, it's basically flawless. So one of these, very similar to this, went for three thousand one hundred dollars. If you're a ceramic artist and you know pottery, you know just how difficult that is to do. The pressure inside would normally make it explode. You have to have just the right thickness, um, and you. Um, yeah, it's very difficult to do this anyway. Uh, so for those of you that are joining us that were on the earlier live feed, and this is going to seem weird once this posts, the last live feed didn't post properly. It got deleted by accident. So we're doing another one here just because we want to have one of these videos uh, up online for posterity so people can kind of see how the auction, how the auction did. Yeah. So, and no, I don't want to break it. <laughs> Vicky's saying, don't break it. Trust me. That's like my fear right now is that I don't want to, to damage it at all. Um, some of the other things, uh, one item that I was really surprised with, the Happy Little Devil. This was one of my favorite pieces. That one right there. That went for $850. I thought that would have gone for much more because it's a really, really nice piece. Um, that one, I think, um, went a little bit cheap. But that's okay. So the grand total that everything went for. And uh, to be clear, this particular auction, what we decided to do is anything that was made and signed by Mary, we're giving half of the proceeds back to the family. Um, so out of this auction, the, the total was about 62,000, 62,000. I mean, yeah. that's, that's crazy when you think about it, $62,000. So a good chunk of that is gonna go back to Mary's uh, son and daughter. Um, and no, somebody said earlier on the earlier live feed, well, it must be nice to be millionaires. We are not, <laughs> we are certainly not in that position. It would be nice someday to be in that position, but, um, I felt that considering it was their mom's work and they weren't able to access the house and get in and find the stuff, um, that it seemed like the right thing to do. So they are going to be getting a pretty good size check on, um, on, I think Friday or Saturday, the auction house should have the, the check ready. 
And then ours will be going back <laughs> into our debt uh, because we've been putting a lot of these renovations on our line of credit. So it'll be nice to pay down some of our debts. So that we're very pleased for that too. But yeah, they're very, very nice people. Um, so we were happy to, to be able to share in the profits with them. And, um, you know, they gave us a very good price on the home and it just felt like the right thing to do. Now that said, um, we had, I think as I mentioned about 172 pieces, 92 of them went this past auction. We are planning a second auction for the remainder of the pieces, the majority of the remainder of the pieces uh, through Kastner again. So if you signed up for that auction last time, you will still be able to to, uh, to bid on the future auction that's going to be happening. We are looking at doing it in about five or six weeks time. And there's a lot of other interesting pieces that didn't make this past auction that we'll be making the next one. Mm -hmm. So that we'll start to categorize and catalog and get all that stuff ready uh, for the next sale. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully that'll help us out a bit so we can uh, look at getting our general store project on the go. So very excited about that. Um, How much did the crying mask go for? Uh, the crying mask also went for 850. And that was a beautiful piece. It was quite large. Um, so the masks I felt were undervalued at the sale. The spheres did very well. And um, yeah, it was just a whole lot of work. I mean, to find all these beautiful things, to find, you know, such beautiful art and these objects in the house. And, um, you know, the, it was hidden in garbage and hidden in trash and wrapped in plastic bags and all over the place. Uh, as you know, from watching the videos, it took me months and months to find all this stuff and 25 tons of garbage and my health has not been very good lately, which I will go to the doctor tomorrow morning and get my cough checked out. Um, but yeah, just amazing auction overall and very, very happy with how the results went. Um, so somebody said that, I actually have seen this more than once. Uh, the photos of the Potter house on the real estate site are bad quality. The resolution is so low that the pictures are pixelated and unclear. Yeah, the, um, the real estate agent came by the house today and they did um, come and take a bunch of new pictures. So they should be updating the um, the website for the home and um, and getting that up there pretty soon. I see a question um, somebody was asking, uh, Anna asked, what will you do with the bus that didn't sell? Um, that bus that didn't sell, uh, the other piece did end up selling. There was a sparkle glazed vase, which was really nice. It was a nice piece actually, uh, did sell after the auction. The uh, bust, well, I imagine I'll probably bring back to the shop until we're ready for the next sale. Um, so let's see, uh, any any bids on the house yet? Well, um, it's go it's just up on MLS, so the, the or real realtor.ca or MLS.ca, if you search Provost Alberta, mm -hmm. P-R-O-V-O-S-T, you should be able to find the listing. I think they've got it up there now. Um, yes, thank you, it's listed for $299. And it is an uh, amazing um, uh, opportunity for somebody who wants to live in that town, which the, the town provides you uh, copious amounts of cookies. At any given notice, somebody might knock on your door and you might get cookies handed Delicious to you. cookies. Yeah. A, a, it's been a drive-by cookie. And then they just show up and there's cookies there. Um, so I think it was ever since that the first mention of cookies, then there's been... Yeah. At, some, at, at one point, though, I was like, this is great. But I, I should have been like, you know, it should be nice if somebody brought a veggie tray. But beggars can't be choosers. Uh, nice. A veggie tray. Now you're going to get a bunch of veggie trays. <laughs> yeah. I was like, cookies. Oh, that's really There's nice. There's a freezer. You could have put it in there. And yeah. then I would have had lots of snacks. Uh, the general store will hopefully, I, it will still be here in Edmonton. Because our lives right now are in Edmonton. So. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, that's driving in snow and. For the no, rest. and that that is the goal. I mean, the goal from us doing uh, putting this house together and finding all these objects is to a get our money back from the investment i think we have over one hundred and fifty thousand or so of our own money invested into that property um so anytime we get a little bit money back um from the sale of the pottery or whatever it is can go back um into the coffers for paying for the renovations uh but if the house does sell and i hope that it does um that that money would go into purchasing a general store and that's the goal is that we are trying to find a really cool historic building to put our store in right now we're a newer building uh it's you know only about 15 20 years old or so um but it doesn't have character on the outside but we've added character on the inside but now we want to have a building so when you guys eventually come and visit from all over the place as some of you are we want to have a really great experience for you all so that's the next uh bit for us. Do I still have the tribal bear lamp? Yes, I do. Mary, if you want, you can call me or email me. 
um, after the live feed here today. Or well, you can email me after the live feed. You can call the shop after the weekend, and I'll be back in on Tuesday. Um, any other I, questions we should answer? I, yes. I, if actually, <coughs> Jerry, sorry if it, um, if it was yours that kept on coming up, but I saw it more than once. How many radios were in Mary's house? How many radios? That's a very specific question. Well, there was the record player, um, the, or the pedestal style 70s one, or late 60s one that was sitting in the house. It's still there. Um, there was one in the basement. There was, I don't know, there was maybe four or five radios. Um, you know, the, not a whole lot of radios in the house. Somebody said you need to sleep next to a humidifier. You know mm. what? It's funny. I tried to clean our humidifier because I wanted to make sure that it was as safe as possible. And I took it apart and I could not ever get it back together. So now we have to buy a new humidifier. It was really old and scary what was on the inside. But... Somebody was saying, does the furniture come with the house? Yeah, the all the stuff that we put in the house is gonna go with the house. Um, the reason why we did that, and some of you were like, well, that's crazy to put furniture in a house that you're just gonna be selling again. A couple reasons I did that. One is I wanted, a, I didn't wanna stay in a hotel anymore. Every time I go out there, it was a hundred bucks a night at the hotel, that adds up. And especially if you have other people staying with you, you know, you could be a hundred, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars a night. So by having the house ready for company, um, we could actually stay in the house and save the money. And I've already slept in the house four or five times. So that is, um, especially with Dave and Josh and Dakota coming, um, probably saved over a thousand dollars or so just in hotel fees which paid for a good majority of the furniture which is in the house because we, um, uh, oh, thanks very much, Barbara. Yeah. Barbara Cook just sent us a little uh, gift there. Said the medals for the great grandson. Great Thank great you. Grandson, um, so it made sense for us to, uh, to leave the furniture in the place so we could use it. And then um, they say that houses that are staged, uh, his, Charlie Lives just said, houses that are filled with furniture always sell better it's because it is true sometimes you walk into a house and you can't envision the layout or how it could be laid out um, when you put some furniture in it gives it a little bit of character but of course we did it on a budget i think the furniture that's in the house i, I got an amazing deal the the butcher block we already had at the store i picked that up um in vancouver island um i don't want to say like maybe last year or sometime maybe last summer um the antique light fixtures i had at the shop so there are um, lots of things that went into that house that we already had. And then we uh, put maybe another $1,500 worth of furniture in there. So uh, we, we did it on a budget, but we basically have like a fully furnished house. It's crazy to think we have a whole other house in another town. Maybe that's normal. Some of you guys have like vacation properties, but um, for us, it's strange to have another house. I can't remember what the comment was exactly. Sorry. Um, but they said, did you find anything uh, kind of freaky at all in the house? Like, no, it was no, no, nothing other than the door being tied shut. So uh, I'm going back for those that are jumping on right now and they were asking um, uh, about the uh, the auction results. Um, so somebody's saying uh, if they were sold retail, they would have sold for much more, but that takes space and time. Yes, uh, the reason we did an auction was because we had to move 92 pieces basically in one day and that's the only way to do it is an auction. Um, certainly I could have gotten a little bit better money selling it privately at the store, but that could have taken years. And we're in a situation where we're trying to um, pay down our line of credit because we kind of ramped it up a bit renovating this house, um, which is why we basically did the auction sale and we'll be doing another one too. The results of this auction sale, um, total sales, somebody was asking, it was $62,000 um, roughly in sales. The auction takes 15%. And then uh, half of the items that were Mary's um, that she had made, uh, half of that's going to her um son and daughter do we have a total of how much it was just for what the actual what we're splitting is like what uh, i don't know the auction house is going through right now because they have to wait and make sure everybody's going to pay for it and they, they're getting it all basically they're collecting the money now in the next couple of days and then um, they're going to be shipping off pretty soon but crazy though um that it's all gone and done and uh, there was a lot of really interesting pieces. I mean, she was quite the collector. There was all sorts of um, pieces of pottery that were from other artists other than herself and all sorts of wonderful things. Um, I have one at the store and it actually says on the bottom 1976 Olympics. So she must have, when she was at the Olympics in 76, she must have uh, traded or got it off the lady that made it and took it to the 76 Olympics. Like uh, another one of the artists there was really cool. Oh, thanks, Elena. Um, somebody uh, asked. Do I ever go to Minnesota? Sorry. Elaine is asking. Uh, yeah, I've been to Minnesota before. Um, I went to a Twins game last time I was there. Um, I was a store manager for Target for about a year when they were in Canada. 
and they took us to a Twins game. So uh, Minneapolis is big. That and Prince lived in Minneapolis. Did, I, I didn't know that really prior. I guess I kind of knew that because he always talked about like, uh, was it Mini Wonka or Mini Tonka? I can't remember the name of it. Somebody, the Minneapolis person will correct me. But yes, I've been there before. Uh, and anytime I do travel in the near future, uh, if I go to another city or town, I'll let you guys know in case you ever want to do a meetup and come say hi. Um, we're definitely accessible and, and try and be there to, to meet and greet people too. Uh, let's see. We're, we are uh, going to be posting a couple more videos of the Potter's House still to go. Um, and we are going to, actually one's going to be posting tonight, just a quick little update on some work that Dave and I did yesterday and the day before. Actually today and yesterday. Today, yeah. Wow, that was today. I, I was there doing this <laughs> today and the video day. is posting pretty soon here. Um, and then we are um, going to do another one when we do the open house on the 11th of May. For those of you that are going to be in the Provost area, uh, we're doing an open house from 4 to 6 p.m. So people can come by and see the house live in person and uh, see all the hard work that we've done, what's gone into it. Maybe have some music, some snacks, and stuff like that. So hopefully it'll be a nice experience. A lot of people are saying, is this live again? Uh, it's live again. Yeah, we, <laughs> uh, for those of you that are watching now, we had to go live again because the uh, last live feed that we did earlier got uh, accidentally deleted. Uh, it was me. I, I, it got deleted, and you can't just you can't get it back. So we thought we wanted to make sure that we just uh, were able to um, get this up there for posterity. So that's it. Um, Somebody said Minnetonka. Oh, Hugh Vanden Wilk. Oh, uh, he got, Hugh, it looks like he was at the shop and he got the, um, the, those are Cub Scout totems. Those wolf heads that I found in the other video, those are from the Cub Scouts. Uh, so it looks like his, he said his dogs hate them. If you watch that video where I did the, uh, the ghost town general store, we found those old um, crazy wolf heads that I guess the, the, the Boy Scouts use. So pretty neat. Uh, how did Mary? Oh, how did Mary come to have a Ming vase? Will you, how you authenticate it? Have not figured out how to authenticate the Ming vase yet. I'll have to find somebody uh, who specializes. I don't specialize normally in pottery or or porcelain or uh, things like that. In fact, normally I, I don't bring that kind of stuff in. So for me to end up with this massive collection of art and pottery is a little outside of what we normally do. So one of the pieces um, is or claims to be a Ming vase. And if it's real, I imagine that might be a pretty good payday. Um, but, you know, I don't know. She had a 2,000-year-old Peruvian uh, jug, and that turned out to be real. So you never know what's lying around. <laughs> you never know. Alyssa said she's not feeling well right now either. Alyssa's not feeling well? No. Oh, well, that's not good. My little niece is on right now. And I can say little niece, A, because she's younger, and B, because she's little. <laughs> she's like, you know, three foot seven. <laughs> She's like, you know, she can she can run through the dog door of a door. Oh, you're three was, foot seven. No, she's, That's I don't know, five foot two or something. But she is tiny, though. Um, I bet she's giving you squinty sick eyes right now. Probably, yeah. or shaking her I fist will, at me. I will for you. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Um, so we are, um, yeah, going to answer a few more questions. Yeah, 175 pieces of pottery, 25 tons of garbage. I know I've mentioned that before, but, the, you know, these hands with helpers um had to remove all that stuff it was crazy she said i'm five three thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> five three. Oh, i had it reversed i thought she was three five okay well there you go <laughs> i can tease my niece from here this is great the powers of, of technology you guys are witnessing me being a pesty uncle um so we are uh yeah what what is next pottery adventures um I mean, man, we were just really hoping to to move along and get the general store thing rolling. That's that's what's really next for us. Sometimes we, can make we that don't work. know what's next. Who knows what's coming tomorrow? Um, oh, the other thing. Okay, so on the note of Mary and the stuff that was in the house, there are a few things that didn't make the auction last time that might make the auction this time. We had some of her artwork, so her paintings, her drawings, things like that. Lots more pottery. Um, like probably about 60, 70 more pieces of pottery that I found just in the last couple of visits. Even today, when I went back to the house, I found more pottery. It's crazy. You know, tops of cupboards that I hadn't quite cleaned out yet and open up a box and there's more pottery. In it. It's just nuts. Um, amazing, amazing finds. But I think what she would do is she would get, she would send her pottery out and then they would, the, to the galleries or museums and stuff, and then they would send it back to her um, after they were done exhibiting it. So pretty much um, her work, almost in its entirety, was sitting in that one little house. And it's just crazy that it's still, you know, that it's still there, that it was still hanging out. Pegtooth uh, is wondering if you're regretting not checking out the fridge. Yeah, I am, kind of. 
Um, I feel like it probably was just food. I because most of the stuff that no, oh, I don't know. There was milk containers in there that were um, like folded in, like she'd open them and put something oh. else in. And I know Chances people. Are good, it would have just been. I could go to the dump, I guess, and see if that stuff's still lying around there. I don't know how. Oh, I feel like I don't want to be a part of that video. I don't think they just let I'm you go okay. crawl around in the dump, but yeah. You never know. Um. Yeah. So we will try and answer a few more questions to you guys. Uh, so you have to let it go sometimes 25 times. Yeah, I know. You know, had I not been as, I don't want to say ruthless, but as quick um, to figure out what was worth keeping and what had to go, there's no way we could have gotten through that house in, in a couple months. There's just no way. It would have no. taken years. Yeah, that's, no, that was, re we were only going on the weekends. Like it wasn't like a whole week, and yeah. weeks. It was, um, I, there's a few people asking for Alyssa's um, YouTube channel. Alyssa, if you're still on, do you want to throw up a whole bunch of hearts? And yeah, then you guys watch for it's Alyssa and then her last name starts with Did you H. ask my niece to throw up a bunch of hearts? Yeah, can you throw up some hearts? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a unicorn that pooped rainbows. Yeah. My, my niece can throw and up And then everybody hearts. just watch for her and then, oh, there she is. Oh, there we go. It's yeah. H-A-L-A-S-E-H. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, a lot of people who, who lived through the Depression or lived through that, oh, thank you, Kaiser Skippy, um, would save things because they thought they would have a future use um, or, you know, some people didn't uh, trust the banks and things. So there's yeah. lots of reasons why people kept things. Mary was a very crafty lady and she not only uh, made pottery, she, she was very prolific with her poetry. I found a box just about a week ago or so and it's stacked. I have books and books and books of poetry that she wrote. And if you guys remember the interview, she says, I hope you found my poetry. Um, and I was worried that it had been thrown out because some of it was um, covered, um, mice had been in there. But thankfully, old Alex of two and a half months ago had the foresight to keep that stuff. And I did find the, uh, the, the poetry as well as some of her drawings and other things too. So we are trying to get her poetry digitized right now so that we can get that published for you guys so you can read and, and see what her thoughts were. She was quite proud of her poetry, almost as much I, I'd say as she was of her uh, pottery. So a very prolific artist and talented lady. How she had time to do anything is amazing, uh, let alone the stuff that she did do. So um, so uh, the house, somebody's asking how much we paid for it. Um, the initial cost on the home was uh, $20,000. And that was for the house, the contents, everything. I thought I bought a house full of garbage. Thankfully, it was not the case. Uh, we've since put about, I think, 150 or so into it with new gutters. With basically, everything's new. It's kind of like a brand new house almost. So Sorry, slowly Deborah. recouping from that. I accidentally blocked your comment, but I hadn't meant to. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jessica Basket, for, uh, for writing and following along. So there will be um, uh, an update video. We never really showed you how the attic front porch or basement were progressing. I didn't have those ready for the last before and after video. So I'm posting a video as we speak. So um, that should be going up pretty soon. And the house, uh, for all of you wondering, the house is online. It's on realtor.ca realtor or mls.ca. Oh, thank you very much. Cough drop fund. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you, <laughs> Melbourne. Um, it's on realtor.ca. And we have it listed at two ninety nine nine, which is uh, basically um, a, a mid range asking price for a house in that town. So there is a good possibility. Hopefully, somebody's an entrepreneur. You know that'd make a cool bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. You know um, the the town is right off a highway, so there is a lot of opportunity for people. There's a lake right there. There's fishing. There's hunting for people that hunt. I'm not, you know, don't judge, but the people do hunt there. Um, there's hunting. Not everyone. It's just. Uh... Yeah, well, there's always somebody who's like, that's horrible, but that's just the way of life out in the country. Um, there's a golf course right in town. Like, it's a pretty cool place, actually. Uh, lots of oil and gas jobs, at least there had been. So I think that the pipelines are supposed to come from that area. So I think very soon it'll be booming again. So hopefully we'll have some offers on the house. I know the realtor said that there is a lot of interest in the property already. Lots of people have been going and checking out the, uh, the site and thinking that it's a cool place. Um, so hopefully after this open house, we'll get some people and maybe get an offer. Once the house sells, then the next thing we do is we go off and start the next big adventure, which will be, I guess, we bought a general store or something like that. Who knows? That's the plan, but things show up. Yeah, and it'll be a relocation. So okay. if you guys are asking, um, oh, love how they're pretending to care. Well, that's that's kind. Um, <laughs> Why would you read that out? <laughs> I don't know. There's I... always trolls on here anyway. Yeah, historical. Okay. you got to find them and block them. Oh. 
Hi yeah. to Tyson and Alex. Hi guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's, I know there's always a negative Nancy in there, but it's because they can under it. The thing is, is that, um, oh, thank you so much. Uh, do you look home? Some people that's their experience is that, uh, maybe they are used to people not caring and a lot of people are faking it. So, but I, I guess so. I, it's not towards, it's not actually us because we actually care. So it's, it's their experience. If there's one thing that I've learned with doing a YouTube channel or generally in life, and if there's any advice I can give to to anybody is that. Um, if you do kind things for other people, I think it's a quote or something like it. If you do kind things, uh, people will doubt you, but you should still continue to do kind things anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter what other people think or what other pe people say. Um, you have to live your life and, and live your morals and, and have your adventures and some will be with you and some won't. And that's just the way life is. Um, the uh, town is Provost, Alberta, P-R-O-V-O-S-T, Alberta. So. If you are um, looking at the realtor.ca website or trying to find it, you can find it on there. And I think they're uploading a bunch of new pictures um, very shortly so that you can see what is going on with the house. They, she came and took a bunch of pictures there, so that's really cool. Um, but yeah, we, we uh, are having fun with this adventure. The auction did great. We are um, really just feeling very humbled um, by all of your support and all of your kindness. Uh, Melissa is trying to moderate, by the way. So she's working her way through. I know, I can't even find it. We are pretty lucky, I have to say. Like, when I'm I, when I'm going through and trying to make sure that I block the comments and keep it positive. Hi, Jess. First time commenting. Nice to see you. Uh, it is. Uh, we, I might find one, sometimes two. So, I mean, for the amount of people that we get on here, that's pretty amazing. You guys are, are fantastic. So Very true. Uh, somebody's asking, will you um, share your adventures with the new store? Yes, we certainly will. I haven't posted anything yet because I don't want to show the space we're looking at because I don't want to, I guess, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. Um, I want to make sure that we're able to actually go ahead with this and, and make our, our dreams happen. Um, and the person that we're by, possibly buying it from, he could be on here right now. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, the fellow that has the, uh, oh, sorry, Austin, I wasn't meaning, I, he's saying, why are you ignoring me? I'm not meaning to, we're just trying to catch up with the comments there. Sadly, that's the only comment I saw now is the one that he said, why are you ignoring me? And I have no idea what he wrote beforehand. <laughs> Austin, so, I'm watching for your comments. So if yeah. you can throw it up again, I'll, I, I, sorry, I can't <coughs> throw it up. But. <laughs> um... Do you get memorial jewelry with or made of hair? Uh, yeah, Neil, I have had, um, uh, it's basically was a Victorian um, thing that they used to do. They used to take like a little silver locket, uh, oftentimes with glass, and they would put the, the loved one who had departed, they'd put their hair in it, and you'd have this little locket you could carry around. Um, they don't really do that a whole lot now. Actually, you know, it's that people are always like, oh, that's gross. But you can get your loved one turned into a diamond ring now. Well, it's... Like your ashes. Kind of scammy. It's I don't not, think it's real. It's not real. Yeah, but they say you can anyway. Yeah. It's uh, a, um, Janet, oh, thank you, Nick. Uh, Janet, the gentleman's name is Adam. Uh, looking forward to your new store and your new adventure. Looking for a postcard of my town of Bradford, West Willembury. Have not seen that one yet. And I probably just butchered the, the pronunciation of the, your town name, but... Um, yeah, there's always different stuff coming in. Uh, my car right now is full. Like my store is packed to the roof. This is what, this is one of the main reasons why we need a new store. Um, is that I keep find I'm finding more cool stuff than can fit in the little squishy bucket of my store right now. And it's packed and it's cool, but it's almost embarrassed. It's like when company comes over and you got your laundry all out and you know, dogs and kids are running around and you're like, oh, it's not normally like this, but really it's always like that. <laughs> That's how I feel about our store right now is that it's, I don't want it to be messy uh, or full. It's not really messy, it's just really full. Um, I want it to be more organized and more of an experience, not where you're like, oh, it's cool, but it's super full in here. I just want it to be a little bit more of a better experience. I'm embarrassed like somebody walking in your front door on laundry day, uh, you know, <laughs> that's how I feel right now. Oh, we need to get a new shop. And my car is packed again because I had to move a bunch of stuff out of the, uh, the potter's house. At 1233, Melissa, I will. I, I will go back and check what it is. I hope I don't have my tongue sticking out, eyes crossed, something weird is usually happening. <laughs> uh, let's see, okay. How long have you had your store? We were visiting Edmonton about five years ago. We stopped it for quite a few antique shops. So we, we've had the store for uh, only a few years. Mm -hmm. So that's why you probably weren't able to see or catch the, the store when you were in town five years ago. Five years ago, I had a normal job and I was wishing I had an antique store. And now look at me. I have freedom. Uh, actually, I will say it is... 
really um, nice to be able to do what you love to do. And if any of you have an opportunity to, to follow your dreams, it's, um, you know, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of, um, it's a lot of effort, but you know, I get to wake up and decide where my life is going and, and what's happening. Uh, somebody has, do I come across any Chris Craft wood capri boats from the 50s? Yes, actually, I have. There was one for sale here a couple uh, uh, a couple that, years ago. Is that like the type that we had? No, the wooden racing boat we had was, it was a wooden runabout, but it wasn't a Chris Craft. Chris Craft is like the, I don't know, the Rolex of boats. Does that makes sense? Oh, if you're yeah. like, you, oh, I have a wooden boat. Oh, that's cool. If you have a, oh, but I have a Chris Craft. It's like, well, la ti da. <laughs> I don't know who that person is. Again, with the monocle, it's like the Mr. Peanut guy. Well. <laughs> Or the guy in the Flintstones, who's always like, really? I am a teacher at Sk Sky Without Stars. Wow, I couldn't read that. <laughs> yes, Melissa is a wonderful I must have teacher. That. I must have that voice. <laughs> uh, Penny's asking, am I going to the Red Deer swap meet? I don't know, I might. Um, I need to go down to Red Deer again soon at some point, um, but I haven't, uh, haven't thought about that yet. Thank you very much, Merle. Um, <laughs> yeah, the comical impressions. Sometimes they can't. And what happened with the Flintstones anyway? They used to, it used to be cool, and then they brought in the Great Zoo, and then it kind of, like in the, in when, when they, the, in the run out of ideas for wanting to get to a spot where I'm introducing a Great Gazoo, like we just can't go to an antique store and be like, oh, wait, it's the Great, you know, Wazoo, and there's like a little green alien floating around. That's when you know that we're having trouble coming up with ideas. Um, I think we, we try to keep everything very real because I, um, I, that makes it easier to come up with content because it's what we're actually going through. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, you guys remember, I don't know if you watched the video where I went to the parkade and had all the old cars and I bought the Alfa Romeo that was down there. Um, there was, a I think, a Chris Craft down in that parkade too, but the guy's not ready to sell it yet. So it was, the, uh, it was really the coolest place to go, all kinds of cool boats and, and other stuff. It was... <laughs> You know, I kind of left my name on a few things, including that BMW Isetta, which would be kind of neat if that showed up. But, oh, uh, Marlene uh, Devia says, I give up Sai. I think she was trying to ask us a question. Um, so Marlene, if you see us there, we'll try and we'll try and catch it. Uh, I couldn't even find the, hold on, Marlene, Marlene. Let's see. Yeah. It's hard, it goes by fast, and then as I'm trying to go down. Yeah, the, oh, is there an outside deck where the dining room is? Yes, there is, Marlene. So sorry, it, it the comments go by fairly quickly. Um, there is an outside deck off the dining room. It's It was original, um, well, not original to the house, but the, it was existing when I bought the property. It had a makeshift kind of roof and uh, sides on it, which we took down just to a platform. So it needs to be um, probably cleaned up a, a little bit, but it's still there and it's still sturdy. Somebody wants the hippie fabric from Mary's house, but sadly the hippie fabric has sold the day that video came out. Um, when in doubt, call the shop the day the video comes out and then that's your best bet at getting something uh, from the house. So new merch coming soon. Yes, we're, we're talking about maybe doing like a Pickle Rick shirt or a Potter's House shirt of some kind. Oh, you had the ambulance. I was gonna say, how did they know? They said, I saw you in Irma today. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, you, I was in Irma. Okay, that's crazy because I was in, I was having dinner with Melissa's dad in Wainwright, Alberta, yeah. at the Honey Pot. So if you're ever in Wainwright, go to the Honey Pot. They've got good food. Um, and this lady comes in and she said, "You and at this time we're eating dinner at like three o'clock in the afternoon, so we're the only ones in there." And she says, um, "You must be the ones with the ambulance." And I'm like, "Well, yes, I am." And then she left me a little uh, thing. She's like, "Well, I went in the bar and I said to the, I thought you guys were in the bar." And she went up to a guy and said, "You must be the guy with the ambulance." He said, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she found us anyway. She owned an antique store in Irma, so we went by and checked it out. So that's why I was in uh, in Irma today. Uh, let's see. Check out the Rural Lounge in Irma. It's real good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, Patricia George. Thank you so much. <coughs> um, somebody's asking if we only have two stained glass panels, do you know what you're going to do with them? Yes. Um, I want to keep a piece of the Potter's house with us. And, uh, my aunt is restoring the panels, the stained glass panels that are from the house. Now those panels that were stained glass were originally, um, transom, panels from the top of a window. They were not from the uh, side lights as I originally thought. So I'm going to leave, I know some of you might not like the idea, but I'm gonna leave the uh, decals, decals is what they'd call it locally here, but I'm translating into American talk for you guys. It's like I say garage instead of garage, 
Um, but look, I can say all the different ways. Um, <laughs> I'm learning. Oh um, I'm probably leave those. And I want to bring the, um, the stained glass panels back to the... <coughs> I'm going to cough my way through this. Uh, the stained glass panels are going to be coming back to the, the new shop when we do the general store. I'll try and hang them and find a spot there. So if anybody comes to visit, they can see the beautiful work that my aunt has created. Pickle Rick is going to go to Josh. And um, yeah, this is... Uh, this is the plan, but Pickle Rick, Pickle Rick will only go to Josh after the open house because people want to get the picture taken with Pickle Rick. Yeah. I didn't mean to make a cardboard stand-up pickle guy famous, but I guess that's what happened. <laughs> I never did show the Ming vase on an episode. I have it at the shop right now, though. Um, so, yeah, we are – here's the mission. We are going to make – this store is already cool. But if we have a real old 100-year-old general store, we're going to try and replicate it to look exactly like it was 100 years ago in terms of the fixtures and shelving and the whole deal. And then add really cool displays like our Zoltar and other neat stuff. So it's going to be like the Mr. Megorium's uh, Wonder Emporium of antique stores where people's heads will spin around. Um, and not like poltergeist, as I said earlier. Uh, they'll spin around because of how cool the stuff is inside. And uh, yeah, that's the mission, to make the coolest, weirdest antique shop um, around and fill it with the coolest, weirdest stuff we can find. Um, and I think we're well on our way. All I need is a, another building that I can expand and uh, things will be looking up. So uh, somebody asked if we knew um, uh, Karen before. Oh, yeah. Um, did I know Mary's daughter beforehand? Yes, I did. Um, I This is how I ended up meeting uh, Mary was because her um, daughter uh, and son, well, her daughter and son-in-law, I should say, were customers at my store. Um, and we had a toy store years ago. They were customers there. And then they found me again um, through the... Uh, kind of by news. accident. Well, no, it was they saw the news article about an antique store that helped out a homeless gentleman. And they wanted to go and see what who that was. And then when they walked in the door, they said, it's you? And I went, oh, it's you guys. Because they were really good customers at my last store. Um, this is like maybe 10, 15 years ago we had that other shop maybe 10, no, over 10 years ago, probably like 14 years ago. So we reconnected that way. That's how we met. So I've known them for quite a long time. They're wonderful, lovely people uh, and they are friends. And so that's, this is another reason why I felt like it was um, the right thing to do to help split the, the proceeds with them. And by the way, they never asked for anything either. In fact, they didn't, um, they, they were shocked, uh, but grateful that I was willing to help them out because, um, you know, everybody can use a little uh, leg up every once in a while. So why not help them out? Nobody's head spun in the poltergeist you're thinking of the exorcist oh the exorcist <laughs> what was poltergeist then i guess i don't watch enough horror movies no, yeah the exorcist I, though is the one with the little girl and her head spun all around and, and she threw up hearts all over the oh <laughs> my goodness <laughs> yeah but um guys we just wanted to do a little update so auction went well thank you Sixty-two thousand dollars in revenue uh, from the sale before the splitting of the the proceeds with the family and before the auction takes their cut, but it'll certainly help out. Um, and a couple more Potter House videos to go, one which I'll probably post tonight, which will be really late when it posts, but whatever. Um, and then another one when we do the open house. And one final auction probably to go. For those of you that missed the auction or wanted to place bids on things, we'll be putting another auction up in about five or six weeks. Um, of some more pottery and some artwork and other things too. So if you missed out on the last round or you didn't see something you wanted to bid on, stay tuned because there will be another auction coming shortly and uh, you'll have a, a shot at getting a, a piece from there. So thank you so much for watching, guys. We're going to bid you adieu and sign off for the evening. So have a wonderful evening. We'll see you all soon.